What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2024 Toyota Corolla Cross, courtesy of Younger Toyota in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So today we are in this one because this is actually an affordable compact SUV. You do of course get Toyota's legendary reliability to go along with that. All wheel drive is available. We do have all wheel drive today because I thought it would be a fun day to kind of go out and test out the all wheel drive system in the snow. It is snowing right now now so this should be a fun one but you do get two years or 25,000 miles of complimentary maintenance as well with all new Toyotas for that matter so it's going to save you a little bit of money there too but ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing so as you can imagine, there are a few different trim levels for the 2024 Corolla Cross. First one being the L, starting at $23,610, which is a $550 bump from the 2023 model year. LE, which is the trim we are in today, starting at $25,940. And lastly, the XLE, going for $29,135. And so that was all pricing for the front-wheel drive configuration. If you wanted to add all-wheel drive, you can do that simply at $1,300 then to any of those prices. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Corolla Cross is going to be the same. Powering the Little Beast is a two-liter naturally aspirated inline four-cylinder, putting out 169 horsepower at 6,600 RPM, 151 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,400 RPM, that power being sent to front wheels or all wheels through a CVT. Zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 9.3 seconds. We'll test that out in a little bit here. MPG numbers then coming in at 31 in the city, 33 on the highway for the front wheel drive, 29 city, 30 one then on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel so now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 corolla cross here up to speed all right three two one go it's kind of loud <laughs> Yeah, it's not the quickest thing in the world. It's not bad. It's actually a lot quicker than I expected it to be. Uh, it's certainly not as slow as the Mitsubishi Mirage, but again, not the quickest thing in the world. But it's one of those things where you kind of learn how to drive your car the more you drive it. Uh, it's kind of like the visibility in a Camaro or a 370Z or something like that. You just get used to it. So I don't see any issues with merging onto the highway or anything like that in the Corolla Cross. It would be perfectly fine for me. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important so up front you will find 12 inch ventilated front discs in the back 11.1 inch solid rear disc as far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes it actually comes in at a very impressive 120 foot number that's brilliant i always tell you guys sports sedan number is usually in the one teens usually with suvs you find uh, in the 130s honestly or upper 120 so 120 feet even that's a really really good stopping distance i'm telling you so as far as braking feel goes it's 100% on the firmer side of things. This thing instantly brings you to a stop, even in the snow here today. So I love the braking on the Corolla Cross. Absolutely no issues there. But then touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get an independent McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, it's gonna differ depending upon the configuration that you go with. So for the front wheel drive, you're gonna get a Torsen beam rear axle. For the all wheel drive, you're gonna get an independent multi-link rear suspension and front stabilizer bar comes standard for all trims but if you want a rear stabilizer bar you got to go with the all-wheel drive so essentially what i'm getting at is if you want better handling and if you want better ride quality you're going to go with the all-wheel drive system for the corolla cross i'm just saying so overall as far as ride quality goes it has been perfectly fine on my short little test drive here today these roads are very very smooth but having said that i've had no issues with ride quality on the corolla cross so 100% Toyota. As far as steering feel goes, that's one of the first things I noticed. It's a very loosey-goosey steering feel, as to be expected in most SUVs. Sometimes I'm kind of impressed with the heavier steering feels, but they're rare, I will say that. So it's to be expected. It honestly feels just like the steering feel in the Corolla, if you're familiar with that. So wouldn't have minded if they put maybe a, a steering feel firm mode, uh, like Volvo does, or something like that, just to adjust the steering feel to make it a little more weighted. That's all I'm saying there. But as far as cabin noise goes, do you get a little bit of road noise? It's nothing that bothers me. And you get a lot of engine noise when you really get on this thing. But overall, 
it's to be expected with what the Corolla Cross actually is. And then touching our rear visibility, I can actually see perfectly fine out the back as we come up on even more snow. So this is fun. So yeah, as far as rear visibility goes, I can see perfectly fine out the back. You definitely shouldn't have any issues there. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Toyota Corolla Cross. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Toyota Corolla Cross, finished in blue crush metallic, in case you were curious of the exact exterior color name that we had on this one. But it's always, let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. And this is one of those newer VINs. First character is the number seven, indicating that this one is actually built and assembled here in the US. But as always, let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Black front grille will come on the L and LE trim levels like you guys are looking at right now. However, if you were to go with the XLE, you're gonna get some metallic paint grille surround. So in place of our gloss black, we'll actually be finished in kind of like a, a metallic kind of bronze-ish look, I guess you could say. But to the sides, full LED projector style headlights do come standard for all trim levels across the board. I love that they're not reflector, they are projector and they're both low beam and high beam. It doesn't get any better than that. LED daytime running lights also coming standard. You get the auto off feature for the L, but then auto on and off for the L and XLE trim levels. But then automatic high beams do actually come standard on every single trim level across the board. So if you have your high beams on at night and sense the vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when the vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up the high beams for you there. So I do like that that at least comes standard for all trim levels. And if you were to go with the XLE, you guys can see the cutouts near the bottom. You will actually get LED fog lights then as well. But that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. It's a bit now since we are around to the side of this one. Black roof rails do come on the LE and XLE trim levels, hence the reason we have those. Rear privacy glass also for those two trim levels as well. You will find some uh, silver or black kind of floating roof line. You guys can see that going towards the C pillar there. And actually, if you get up a little bit closer, you're gonna find that it actually does say Corolla Cross on it as well. I'm gonna show you that to you guys real quick. You see that it says Corolla Cross. And actually, if you go down a little bit, you're actually gonna find that there is some Corolla Cross lettering found in the rear taillight there as well. Hopefully you guys can see that it does say Corolla Cross though. I like that. I like the little attention to detail that Toyota put into that. But anyways, black power adjustable side mirrors will come on the L trim level, but they will be body colored for the LE and the XLE trims, but then heated for those two and also with LED integrated turret signals for the LE and XLE trims as well. So let's take a look down at the wheel setup. 17 inch steel wheels with covers for the L trim, 17 inch aluminum alloys for the LE. That is what you guys are looking at. And then 18 inch aluminum alloys for the XLE, but that pretty much rounds out the side profile as the snow starts to pick up here. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Corolla Cross, body colored shark fin antenna found all the way to the top. Just below that rear spoiler, just below that rear window wiper. Trim level badging found on the back tailgate there as well. So if you ever wander onto a lot, maybe on a Sunday, that's where you're gonna go ahead and find the trim level badging as well as the all wheel drive badging if the Corolla Cross is equipped at least. LED taillights come on the XLE trim level only. Otherwise you're gonna get halogens back there. Do you have some body colored accents towards the bottom there i like that on the rear bumper and of course a single exhaust outlet for all trim levels across the board so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next here as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Corolla Cross, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is gonna be a manual tailgate for all trim levels across the board. However, there is a power tailgate available with a convenience package that actually comes with the power moonroof and some other things as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 26.5 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. LED cargo lighting coming standard. You don't always find LEDs in the cargo area, so I like that. Cargo cover coming on the XLE, but it is gonna be optional on the LE trim level. We do have it, so like seeing that as well. Grocery bag hooks back there, chrome plated tire 
tie down anchors and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you are going to find a spare tire but in addition to that there's going to be some in-floor storage surrounding that as well so you could probably put a small ice scraper or something like that back there but then make your way up to the rear leg room that comes in at 32 inches even for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there rear ventilation actually does come standard for all trim levels across the board You're going to find dual rear usb charging ports for the le and xle trim levels and then a rear center armrest with cup holders for the xle trim level only and then make your way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating for the l and le trims 10-way power driver seat with power lumbar for the xle soft text upholstery for the xle heated front seats for the xle as well as far as seat comfort goes in our le trim level that we have with us here today it's actually been perfectly fine i haven't had any issues in my short little test drive here so for manually adjustable cloth seats they actually get the job done so i haven't had any issues there then make our way to the uh, steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping, and it's gonna be wrapped in urethane on the L trim level, but then leather wrapped for the LE and XLE trims, and no issues there yet again. Then make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your Toyota logo all the way to the bottom, lock and unlock, but it is all keyless entry with a push button start for the LE and XLE trims only. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that black engine start button located just kind of by the driver's right knee. And so once started up, there's gonna be two different gauge clusters, 4.2 inch digital screen front and center for the L and LE trim that we have today. But then you will find a full seven inch digital gauge cluster for the XLE trim trim level but having said that the gauges that we have today they're probably the most basic gauges in existence right now so tachometers on your left speedometers on your right you got the small screen front and center and there is really no creativity or originality whatsoever to these gauges they're simply white on black there's no 3d effects like they had in maybe the 2022 model year if i remember correctly so i wouldn't have minded if they did a little bit more with these gauges at least on the l and le trim levels they can be analog i got no problem with that but at least create some kind of a 3d effect or some kind of nice design rather than just white on black and just there's no creativity whatsoever but anyways through the digital screen you can check out outside temperature how many miles you have left until you hit empty there's a digital speedometer pretty much everything you'll possibly want on the digital screen at least but then make our way to overall interior quality power moonroof is going to be a 940 dollars option for the le and xle trims but it also does come with a convenience package which by the way goes for right around 2100 dollars, i believe so we do have that i like that but Auto dimming rear view mirror for the XLE trim level. Ambient lighting for the XLE trim level as well. Wireless phone charger coming on the LE and XLE trims. That's located just in front of the shifter. I like seeing that. Automatic climate control for the LE so we can set a temperature. It'll automatically hit that for us. And dual zone climate control for the XLE trim level. But one of the little interesting things that I really like on the Corolla Cross here is the uh, overhead LED lighting here. It's kind of got this Mercedes-Benz effect. This is almost exactly the way Mercedes-Benz set up their interior lighting as far as the design goes and the way the LED lights kind of show. So I like that overhead lighting there. And uh, just behind the shifter, you got an electric mechanical parking brake. You got a couple cup holders as well within the center armrest. Oh, it's a little bit of storage there. You do actually have a 12 volt power outlet in there and another uh, USB charging port as well. But overall, everything is kind of finished on the basic side of things. You got a black plastic door handle, a lot of black plastic surrounding the cup holders and on the doors, but it's okay. It still gets the job done. So yeah, I'll just say that. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here. Eight inch color touch screen display it does come standard for all trim levels across the board. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming with that wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay for all trims. I love that. Well done, Toyota there. You can check out your driving statistics up there as well, along with your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound system, there is really one of them and then an optional one. So you're gonna find six speakers for all trim levels coming standard. However, there is an optional nine speaker JBL sound system that goes for $800. We don't have that one with us here today. We do have the six speakers. So having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today and Let's test out the clarity of this one. Actually, not that bad. I usually say that too, I feel like, about Toyota six speaker sound systems. They're pretty good for six speakers. I'll just put it that way. They're, you expect a lot less, and actually, you're kind of greeted with a good bit of bass, 
very good clarity actually for six speakers as well. Having said that, I remember reviewing the JBL sound system in last year's Curl Cross that I reviewed, and that was amazing. I love that, but this is actually pretty darn good for six speakers as well. But last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do both Curl Cross and reverse, you will find a rear view camera. Not the highest definition rear view camera, but it still gets the job done nonetheless, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS, that pretty much says it all right there. Front side side current airbags do come standard driver's knee airbag up front as well, but also in the back, rear side impact airbags. That's like an $800 option for Mercedes and BMW. Also in the back, latch, aka lower anchors and tethers to children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard Toyota Safety Sense 3.0. That gives you a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane departure alert with steering assist, lane tracing assist, dynamic radar cruise control, and road sign assist then as well. Then if you were to go with the LE or XLE trims, you're gonna to add to that a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert and safe exit assist then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here on the Corolla Cross, excellent safety. You can't beat an IHS Top Safety Pick Plus. Legendary reliability, that has been proven at this point. The JBL sound system is excellent. I remember that one in last year's review. Six speaker sound system, it's pretty good as well. Good starting price point as well. Starting in the lower 20s is definitely a rarity these days with inflation and all that. Wireless connectivity, you don't always find that really on most cars out there. So usually you have to still wire it up through a USB cable with your phone to the car. So I love that it's wireless. Gives it a much more cleaner look on the inside here. As far as uh, room for improvement goes, this thing is definitely slow, unfortunately. So, and honestly, I don't mind the slowness because the trade-off is you're gonna get excellent reliability there. But one thing that really does need improved upon on this thing is the gauges. The gauge cluster, at least on the L and LE trims, not the XLE, they're so boring. If there was an award for the most boring gauges, I think it would probably have to go to the Corolla Cross or the Corolla because I know they use these gauges as well, but they didn't use to. That's the weird thing. They went with a kind of cool looking gauge cluster to this very boring one for some reason. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Corolla Cross in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in the new car reviews because that's what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. Mm -hmm.